In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of Metasploit. Hi, my name is Kaiser Clark. I'm a full-time penetration tester, and on this channel, I create content to help you learn cybersecurity and ethical hacking. If that sounds interesting to you, do me a favor, hit the like button on this video, and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content. So what is Metasploit? So Metasploit is a hacking framework, and I like to think of Metasploit more like a tool more like a Swiss army knife that has pretty much everything you need to conduct a penetration test from beginning to end. There is quite a lot of tools that is built into the framework and we can't cover all of them because that would take hours and hours and hours, but I am gonna cover some of the basic points of Metasploit. And I think one of the major things with Metasploit is the auto exploits, which makes exploiting targets a lot easier and faster. So that's really what I wanna focus on in this video. This demo is for educational purposes only. Ethical hacking is legal and differs from illegal hacking. Always ensure you have legal permission before performing what you see in this demo. So before you can exploit a system, you need to find vulnerabilities. So in order to find vulnerabilities, you have to do your reconnaissance and your enumeration and potentially discover vulnerabilities. So as you can see, I have already ran an MAP scan and if you are unfamiliar with MAP or you want to learn MAP a little bit better in a more practical way, check out my MAP video up above, click on it and watch it, and it will tell you a practical way to use MAP. But we're not going to cover that in this video, and I want to show you the results. So the results show that we have port 445 open, that's SMB, and that's where the vulnerability is. You can see it says state vulnerable. And we have Microsoft System Vulnerable to Remote Code Execution, MS08067, CVE 2008 So if we just copy this here, and we can launch Metasploit like this, MFS console dash Q. You don't have to provide the dash Q, but if you don't provide dash Q, it will show a bunch of ASCII art and it's it looks cool, but it's not needed and it clears up the terminal. So I typically do dash Q, but you can, omit the dash Q if you want. And the dash Q means dash quiet. So it kind of, it keeps the terminal nice and clean, which is important in my opinion, because the less info you have on the terminal, the less distracted you can get and the easier it is to find vulnerabilities in my opinion. So once you're in your MFS console, we could search for, let's say we found an Apache vulnerability. So Apache for version 2.2.2, .2 and we can hit enter and there is, an exploit that pops up for us. You can also search for just Apache and you can see there's way more here because it's we didn't specify a version. So the more information you put in your search, the better your results is gonna be. But in this case, we want to search for the CVE right here. And as you can see, we have quite the bit of results here, but honestly, we only need this one right here because this is the module we're going to be using so there's two ways to use this module you can copy and paste this and put use and then paste this and then go to the module or in my case i typically just to do like to do use zero and we're in the module let's go ahead and clear the terminal because i don't like the clutter and usually when i get into a module like this the first thing i like to do is options because i i want to know what does this module need in order to function? So in this case, we have to have our host. So you can see required column here is yes. So we have to have our host. We have to have our port, which is automatically set for us. But if this is run on a different port, we want to change that. SMB pipe browser is already set for us. But if it was different, we could change it. Exit func. So this is this is getting into nitty gritty here, but you can change your exit function to do different things. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to leave it alone. L host, this is your local host. This is your IP address. L port this is gonna be your listening port or your local port. You can set you know, the port that you wanna listen on. The only thing that we really need to fill out is our host. It's the only one that's required that's blank. So we can set our host to our target IP address, which is this. And if we hit options again, you can see that our current setting is that. Now, however, we have to change L host as well because this is my Ethernet zero IP address. I want to use my tunnel zero IP address. So I actually want to change my IP address. Set L host to 10.10.16.30. And then if we clear the terminal and hit options, so everything looks 
really good. And there's two ways you can run a module. So you can type in exploit like that. But in my case, I like to run run because it's less characters to type and it's easier. And this was going to run. And if it works successfully, we should get a interpreter show, as you can see here. And then we can see get UID and we are into the authority system. That is the highest privilege account on a Windows machine. So we have effectively pwned this machine thoroughly in all the way. So that is an easy way to get into machines if they have low hanging fruit vulnerabilities like this. So if you are in a interpreter show and you want a regular show, all you do is type in shell. And as you can see, we are in a standard command prompt. So we can do dir and it works exactly like a standard Windows command prompt. We can change directory to the C drive, do dir and listen to contents. As you can see here, this is a Windows XP system, but it works just like a regular command prompt. To go back to your interpreter shell, you can do exit and it goes back to my interpreter. So from here, you can do one thing that you can do is upload. So we can upload files, so we can do like file path. So if we are wanting to download a file from the target system and put on our system, just to do download and then file path. You can also get tokens by loading incognito. And then you could do list underscore tokens dash U. And as you can see, we have different tokens and we can impersonate tokens so you can do a command like this impersonate token and we could do this token we can just copy this place it here and then run that we can also migrate processes so if we do pgrep and let's say we want to migrate into the lsas process we can do l sas and we could do migrate 676 so you would change, this would change every time because the process ID of LSS is going to be different every time on every machine, uh, which is why you have to do the pgrep, which is basically searching for a process. So as you can see, we successfully migrated our process into LSS. And now that we have migrated into LSS, we can actually run Mimikatz now. And if you're not familiar with Mimikatz, basically it's a way to get hashes of all the users on the system. So you can see we have successfully loaded up Kiwi, which is basically Mimikatz inside of metasploit and then we can do something like creds all and then we can dump our hashes for all users like this and then you see here these are all the password hashes for this system and with this we can run password cracking attacks we can run past the hash attacks really the sky's the limit here we're not gonna get too far into password cracking that is a video for another time but that was how you would get the hashes of a system and uh, if you were looking to attack another system on a network because password reuse is so prevalent password hashes are pretty nice to have when you're on an engagement and obviously there's a ton of other modules but those are just a couple things you can do to really help you during your hacking endeavors you can also use metasploit to create reverse shells in this case we're using msf venom as you can see right here and we are specifying the payload like this so it's a windows machine and if it was a 64-bit machine you would throw in x64 like that but since this is 32-bit we are omitting this and we can also if this is a linux machine you would just put linux like this but in this case it's windows and we are specifying interpreter you don't have to use a interpreter shell but interpreter shells on windows are way more powerful than a regular reverse shell so if you can get an interpreter shell definitely go that route if you have the option. And then as you can see here, we're doing reverse HTTPS. And then you can also change from stage to stageless. So I'm not gonna get into the difference between stage and stageless too much. I would highly recommend Googling what is a stage versus a non-stage payload. But in this case, we're doing a stage payload and we're doing a reverse HTTPS shell. And you can also do reverse TCP as well. Really, there's a lot of options here. But we're not going to dive into nitty gritty, but we're just showing you like the basics of MSF Venom. There is tons of other options for payloads out there. LHost is the local host. So this is going to be our IP address. So in this case, we want to do 10.10.16.30. And L port is the listening port. 
dash F. This is the file format. So for this particular reverse shell, we are putting an ASPX form, but there's also other forms out there like EXE, ELF, and there's tons of other ones out there. But in this situation, it's just ASPX. And then dash O is the output file. So I'm naming the file hacker.aspx. And then we would just run this and we can see that we have a file called hacker.aspx. And if we do a cat hacker ASPX, this is all the shell code that it just generated for us. So it's a really nice tool to create reverse shells very fast and efficient, and it helps you tailor it in a way that fits your needs. So we are on a different target now, and the vulnerability on this system is within the FTP. I had an anonymous login. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this hacker.aspx file on the FTP server. And if we do a DIR again, we can see that I have successfully uploaded a file called hacker.aspx. Now to take advantage of our reverse shell, we need to set up a listener. In the MSF console, we need to use exploit slash multi slash handler and it automatically defaults to the generic reverse shell tcp so we need to set our payload to windows slash interpreter and we decided to do reverse https and you want to set the same payload that you made when you did the msf venom so if we wanted to do you know reverse tcp you wouldn't set your payload to reverse HTTPS. You would set this to reverse TCP. So just make sure they match up. And then we would set our L port to 443 because that's what we did in our MSF Venom command. And then we would set our L host to 10.10.16.30. So that's our IP address. I like to clear the terminal to clear it up and then hit run. And as you can see, we started a HTTPS reverse handler on HTTPS 10.10.16.30.443. So now this is just waiting for us to trigger our exploit. So in this particular situation to trigger our exploit, we need to open up a web browser and we need to navigate to our targets. So if we push enter, this should trigger our reverse shell. And if we go back to our terminal, and as you can see, we have a interpreter shell so we can get UID to see who we are. And we are IS a pool slash web, which is typically um, a, an account that you would see for exploiting a web service, which we just did. So now we are looking to elevate our privileges. And there, Metasploit has a nifty tool called the Exploit Suggestor. So to use it, we need to background our session. So we can hit background. You can always see your sessions by typing in sessions. As you can see, we have one active session with ID of one, and this is the session that we just background. And this is really good if you're controlling multiple PCs or multiple sessions on within Metasploit. So in this case, we want to use post multi recon local exploit suggestion. Push enter on this, and if we can see options, all we have to do is set the session that we want to run the exploit suggestion on. So if we do set session, and remember our ID up here was one, one push enter and then push run again this is going to run the exploit suggestion on session one which is the session that we just background this is going to take some time it's going to collect all the information and it's going to suggest privilege escalation exploits for us to use against the target all right so you see here the exploit suggestion has finished running we have a ton of results as you can see we have about 15 potentially invulnerable exploits we can use to elevate our privileges. In this case, we are going to use exploit three because I know this works because I have previously pwned this machine in the past. So all we're gonna do is we're going to copy this module and we're going to do use, paste our module that we wanna use. And again, we wanna see our options. And as you can see here, all we have to do is set our L host and our session. So set L host 10.10.16.30 and we can set session to one and then we can hit run. And this is going to run the exploit in our current session, which in theory should elevate our privileges from the web account to NT authority system. Give it some time. 
it's thinking, it's thinking, and we have a interpreter shell. If we do a get UID, we are into authority system. So we have successfully escalated our privileges using the Metasploit exploit suggestion and Metasploit itself. And then from here, we can do the same stuff. We can get password hashes and we can do all kinds of other stuff now that we have a interpreter show we can do upload downloads and tons of other stuff like i talked about earlier and that is an introduction to metasploit like i said earlier there's tons of other things you can do inside metasploit this is really just scratching the surface and this is really the core of what metasploit is in my opinion these are the things that i use the most in metasploit However, there are some more advanced stuff that I might get into in a later video. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that. And if you want to see me hack live on stream and you want to see how some of the stuff fits better together, I do stream every Sunday at 9 p.m. Pacific time. That's noon Eastern time every single Sunday. And you can check out my latest live stream right here.